Indeed, she is accused of backing her car into her boyfriend, also a Boston police officer he was, John O'Keefe. He was found in a snowbank outside of a friend's home the following night. Uh, prosecutors accusing Reed of basically, basically leaving him there to die. Her defense, though, says she is the victim of a sloppy investigation and a massive police cover-up. So, Jennifer McCabe now on the stand. She is a key witness in this trial because she is Brian Albert's, uh, she is a friend of Brian Albert's wife, Nicole, who testified last week and said that this witness burst into their bedroom saying that John was missing. So let's get into court and see what she has to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, where do you live, ma'am? Canton. And uh, how long have you lived in Canton? Um, approximately 20, well, my whole life, um, I lived in Canton, except when I first got married, I lived in Stoughton for a year or two. And um, where you live currently in Canton, how long have you lived there? Um, I live at uh, 12 Country Lane, and I've lived there about 10 years. And uh, prior to that, where did you live in Canton before Country Lane? Um, 15 Sutcliffe Ave in Canton. And how long did you live on Sutcliffe? Uh, approximately 10 years. And with regard to both uh, addresses, who, who, if anyone, do you live there with? I live there with my husband, Matt, and my four daughters. And uh, how old are your four daughters? Um, 15, 16, 18, and 20. Now, if I could turn your attention to January 28th and to January 29th of 2022, do you recall what days? I do, yes. And uh, do you recall what days of the week they were? Friday and a Saturday. So starting with uh, Friday, uh, January 28th in the evening, uh, do you recall um, what was going on that night or where you went? What, what, what were you doing? Um, well, first, I set up at my house um, for a, a team dinner for my daughter's hockey team. Then I met up with some parents um, for my daughter played for the Canton High basketball team. So we met up with some parents before. Um, we had a drink, appetizers. Uh, my younger two were with us. We fed them dinner. And then we went on to Canton High School to the basketball game. Now, starting back, the, the oldest daughter with the hockey uh, dinner at your house, that was uh, your daughter, Allie, is that correct? Yes. She's your oldest? Yes. Now, the daughter who had the basketball game, is that your second oldest? Yes. Um, and with regard to uh, her, she was uh, on the varsity team, is that right? Yes. Before Kenton High School? Yes. And um, with respect to just basketball in general, when the kids were younger, what, if any, role did you have in regard to that? Yes. Oh, I would. But then you'll move on quickly. Sure. Um, I was a basketball coach for the rec, well, the town program. For how many years? Um, I believe with Emily, I started approximately when she was in fifth grade, and then I was also a coach for my daughter, Olivia, I think starting when she was in sixth grade. And with my youngest, I think I coached from first grade on, up until eighth grade. Now... <clears throat> As far as the high school game was concerned, uh, is there a sort of a typical start time for high school basketball game? Yeah, move on. We, we know the time. Move on. After the basketball game, where did you go? Um, my husband and I dropped um, my youngest daughter home, and then we proceeded to meet my sister at the waterfall. And which sister? Is that? My sister, Nicole. How many sisters do you have? Three. And do you recall about what time it was that you got to the water? Approximately 9 o'clock. And uh, when you say we, who do you mean? My husband, Matt, and myself. And uh, do you recall which vehicle that you were in uh, going around Canton that night? I believe it was my car, yes. And what kind of car was that? Um, Denali. Uh, Yukon, I think. Denali, yeah. Uh, so bigger type vehicles? Actually? Yes, big SUV. Now, with respect to, uh, you, you got a cell phone around that time, is that correct? Yes. And your cell phone, what if any connection did that have between uh, the cell phone and the vehicle? At that point, I don't think mine was connected. I'm not sure. Now, when you arrived to the waterfall, did you go right in, or, or what if anything did you do? I waited a few minutes because my husband was on a phone call. And uh, at some point, did uh, you and your husband then go in? Yes. And when you arrived in the waterfall, where within the waterfall did you go? Um, we walked in, and I believe we sat at the third table. 
And at the time that you arrived, who, if anyone, was there that you were familiar with at that day? Um, Chris and Julie Albert, Nicole Albert, Caitlin Albert, Tristan Morris. And at some point shortly after that, or at some point after that. Okay, Jennifer McCabe on the stand there, wife of Matthew McCabe. You're hearing the uh, outline and the layout of the uh, waterfall bar that night. If I've learned anything, it's I think everybody who's lived in Canton, Massachusetts, I now know them. Uh, here, uh, Sherry Botwin is with us here uh, in studio, and Catherine Lozardo as well. So, Sherry, I'm very curious to get your take as a mental health professional on this defendant. Your, your read of her as she sits there, Ms. Reed, uh, what you've seen in the news. Give me, give me your take on her. Yeah, so, you know, I feel like she is someone that is presenting like she's done something wrong. I find her to be... We were talking about this before. She presents as if she has borderline personality disorder, which is a personality issue where someone can be very angry and they can be somebody that's done and said a lot of lies. So what happens is when I watched her in some of the interviews before the trial, I don't feel like I'm listening to a woman who's grieving her boyfriend. I feel like She's sitting in the courtroom and she's sort of smug at times. She's laughing, smiling, and there's this look in her eyes, and I don't really know how to put it into words exactly, but I feel like there's a lot of anger that emulates from her eyes, and I don't find her to be a likable defendant. Like I was saying to you before, usually I feel bad for the defendant. In this case, I'm not having those feelings at all. So that says to me, this is not a genuine, authentic, person who's just suffered an awful trauma and now is being accused of something that she didn't do. Yeah, That's very, very interesting. And that take, who knows, the jury members may feel the exact same way. And as I say, likability, never underestimate it. Unlikability, exactly the same. So uh, we're going to have more from this witness. And I appreciate your insights, uh, Sherry, on that. Uh, let's talk more about this case when we come back. Again, Karen Reed is on trial for the death of John O'Keefe. We'll be right back.